I have been obsessed with custom building mountain bikes since I was 13 years old. It's one of the main reasons I started Worldwide Cyclery and frankly still love the company because I get to do this kind of stuff. I haven't built up a full-fledged enduro bike for myself in quite some time and I just did and I did a lot of really unique, unusual things on this bike and well, the bike is just kind of unusual so let's check it out. So this is it. It is a Banshee Titan V3.2 floating on German engineered in 10 suspension and Bird Hawk 30 wheels. This is definitely a different bike for me. I haven't built an enduro bike in a while and I wanted to do something unique and I don't know, all of this kind of just transpired really nicely and this thing came out amazing and it's been such a fun bike to ride. Banshee is just this small boutique true mountain bike brand run by core mountain bikers. I've been riding them since, man, I think I was a kid. I have, I've had multiple amps, which is their dirt jump bike, a Spitfire and a Rune over the years. They've always stuck with aluminum. They've always stuck as a, a small boutique brand. They've never tried to go big or be traditional or anything like that, which I've always respected and admired about Banshee. This particular frame is a size large. I don't really care what the frames are labeled as in terms of sizes these days. I like a 470 reach, which is what this is. For me, a 470 reach and a 32 mil stem is nice spot on and so that's what I'm looking for. Man, this bike has come out so cool. It's just over 31 pounds, albeit it feels a lot lighter because the suspension is so plush and the bird wheels spin up so fast. Let's dive into a little bit of the specs on various components before I dive into more detail about them. This bike, the suspension and the wheels probably all deserve an individual video of their own. And we actually did do a video on bird wheels in particular, cause that's such an interesting product. So please do check that out. Links below in the video description for the detailed build spec and everything on this bike, as well as that bird video link and anything else. Please do comment if you wanna see an individual video about just the frame or just the fork or just the shock or all of it, please let us know. But to talk about the suspension. So this is a kind of a cool story. We had seen some 10 suspension poking around the internet, never really laid eyes on it. And on the MTB podcast, we were talking about how many various amazing and rare boutique sort of European brands there are in the mountain bike scene that we really don't get to see very often in North America. Intend, the guys over there listened to the mountain bike podcast and they reached out and they said, hey, we're, we're one of those rare boutique German engineering brands and we make suspension. Do you want to try it out? And we're like, Yes, of course we do. That's where this suspension came from. It's not really readily available to purchase in the United States. We might try and change that in the future because after I rode the suspension, I thought, holy crap, we really need to bring this stuff in the US and start selling it. But as of now, it's pretty hard to get and also fairly pricey. This fork, the edge fork is at 170 mil of travel. It's obviously an inverted fork, that sort of motocross style design. It's pretty amazing in the sense that I've ridden some inverted forks in the past on mountain bikes, but never one that's got to this caliber. And it's made me really kind of see the future a little bit. And I have a feeling that in the next five years, a lot of 150 mil or more travel mountain bike forks are going to be inverted because they're getting to the place with engineering where they're getting the stiffness and the weight in line with the existing style traditional mountain bike forks and the performance of that design is just way better. There's less unsprung weight and the way that the whole setup is design is just Again, whole video in itself, I could ramble on about it. Look and do that a little bit more because there is some other videos on this in 10 fork in particular. Push Industries, which is a very prominent suspension company in the mountain bike world, has teased and sort of introduced an inverted fork that looks very similar that's not out yet. I think it's gonna be a thing in the coming years for, for that longer travel bike because riding this thing has just kind of blown my mind. I will say I would like more time on it. I would like more back-to-back -back comparisons to compare it to a Fox 38 or a Zeb to like really dig into that. And I think we'll do that in a future video, but sort of first impressions and a handful of hours on this suspension has really blown me away. And I don't want this fork to sort of take all of the sort of thunder away from this rear shock, which is also just this mind blowing, crazy German engineered and assembled and built rear shock that is an air shock, albeit it has a really untraditional and small shaft for an air shock. That's what she said. <laughs> it's crazy. This bike just is, I've never felt a bike that has, it's so plush and so, it's just so perfectly damped. That you um you had you 
Ew. And it really, the faster you go, the more stable this thing feels. And it just makes the whole bike have so much traction and stability when you're riding on that rough sort of trail. It's, it's incredible. It, very, it does feel very race inspired. The slower you go, the more it kind of just, I don't know, I have to maybe tune it a little bit more, but the first thoughts of it, like if I'm going a little bit too slow or I'm under like really slow braking and diving into things, I need to work on the, some compression settings there. But the second you get this thing over 10 miles an hour, it's just unbelievable how light and sort of fluffy it feels and just how energetic it feels for being this much of a long travel bike. Banshee also puts a lot of emphasis on having the least amount of friction possible in their suspension design. The trunnion mount's a big part of that, having bearings right there. And and that really just helps amplify how well that rear shock works on this bike too. All of this has come together to just be this enduro bike that's really felt so fast and agile and playful and very different than a traditional enduro bike of its same weight and travel range. So anyways, that's my small ramble on the suspension and the frame. The wheels, I love Bird Hawk. These are the 30s and yeah, it's just such a good setup. These things spin up so fast with their rim. I used to say I don't ride carbon and rims and I'm going to tell you why I personally do not ride carbon rims on my mountain bike and probably never will. That one didn't age quite so well. I stuck by that for a long time. I've since changed because in the last three to five years they've made carbon rims to where I can't break them anymore. So I'm just gonna ride them because they're lighter and they have a really good feel. They've also tuned them over the years, the various brands, Bird included, to make the rims not unbelievably harsh and stiff, but have this like good balance of compliance. So they kind of have a nice balance there and it doesn't feel like the old carbon wheels that were just crazy stiff. The other thing that's kind of different for me is I'm not riding Maxxis tires on this bike. I'm still a diehard Maxxis fan. I did want to try these new Continental tires. Uh, the names are crazy. These ones are the Zynatols. I still not really sure like perfect combinations dependent on Xynatol or Cryptotol or Argatol. Um, but on this bike, we did Xynatols front and rear in 2.4s and yeah, they're impressive. They're, they're really amazing traction wise, rolling resistance. It's been really cool to test these things out. I think, you know, these three tire models from Continental are probably the only tires that I could say are seriously running up with like a very competitive feel and traction wise against Maxxis in the mountain bike scene. So that's really cool and awesome to see, albeit they're still really having issues with inventory and getting the right amount of sizes and different casings and sidewalls and all that sort of stuff readily available in North America, but maybe they'll fix that. Beyond that stuff, five dev trail enduro cranks. These things are epic. Absolutely love how these things look and just really paired well with this bike. Also a five dev chain ring. That's paired with Crank Brothers Mallet E-Pedals with a titanium spindle. Little weight weenie touch right there. I love Crank Brothers Mallet E-Pedals. Perfect for this kind of bike or almost any bike. Other weird things that I did here. This is a Leonardi cassette. Uh, very rare a boutique Italian brand. It is a 9 to 48 12 speed built for SRAM and still goes on the XD driver body. It has 533% gear range, so actually more than SRAM's 10 to 52 to 520% Eagle cassette, and it's lighter. Pretty cool. It's been interesting to try. It shifts perfectly fine. I have like zero complaints about it so far. It seems awesome. I will say, I did randomly break a chain on this bike at sort of a, I have no idea how, like the master link just disintegrated. Those are the kind of weird things that sometimes happen when you run non-SRAM cassettes on SRAM chains, but I can't chalk that up to say that that was necessarily this cassette or something else, so I need more time on it. But other than that weird blip, which again, can't really say it was a result of the cassette. Otherwise, the cassette is rad. It's been cool to try this thing. I like the look of a 48 tooth large cog rather than the 52 and the fact that it's got a larger range is, is pretty cool. Oh, and it's lighter. Uh, not by much, but a little bit lighter than the Eagle cassette. So weight weenie approved there. This is that newer Wolf Tooth Revolve dropper post. Not even close, bud. Seems perfect. 150 mil travel, no complaints, looks rad, works great. No issues so far, but it's a dropper. So if there's an issue, it's not gonna happen anytime soon. It'll happen 50 hours into owning the thing. Wolf tooth seat post clamp, wolf tooth remote. I love that remote. I really enjoyed that feel. And uh, this whole like system wolf tooth has going with their remote and their new dropper. 
styled. I love it. WTB Silverado saddle with carbon rails. Again, a little bit of a weight weenie situation going on there. I like these seats. I'm not super picky. I kind of just like the way that they look and the way that they feel. It's a little bit more of a firm, sort of fast, light XC style seat, but I like that. It seems good for me. Least but not last, cockpit. Of course, Trail One Rockville stem and 32 millimeter length with the Trail One titanium bolt upgrade in gold on there. Trail One Crockett carbon bars with a 15 mil rise and then trail one hell's gate grips obviously if you guys are watching this far in this video you probably know that worldwide cyclery and the crew here helped co-found the trail one component brand so we can have an outlet to work with engineers to make all of the stuff that we really enjoy it's not even a couple years old yet we've got some killer stuff and also donated several thousand dollars to support trail networks and that's a big part of that brand so anyways links below if you don't already know about that least but not last i think i forgot to mention uh sram eagle 12 speed shifter xx1 and then XX1 Eagle rear derailleur. Code RSC brakes paired with 200 millimeter front and rear intend massive rotors. I'm not sure if they even still make those. It was a little, I don't think they're like in their navigation on their website, but they're somewhere on their website. They're pretty cool. They just sent those along with the suspension and we tried them out and they work great, but they're rotors. So it's kind of hard to tell quantifiably if one rotor is better than the other. They haven't bent, they work good. They've been silent and work just as good as you'd imagine a rotor on these brakes. So yeah, that kind of rounds out this bike. Please do drop any comments below. I'm more than happy to get back to you guys and answer various questions about this thing. And also, if you want to dig into more details about it, hit that link below that takes you to the article that has all of the various specs and everything. I can be reached in the comments and also on my Instagram. It's at Jeff Cayley if you ever want to ask me random bike nerd questions. And I'm only telling you that because you've watched this video thus far and I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's all. Share this video with your mountain bike friends that might appreciate this crazy enduro bike I've built and talk to you guys the next one. See ya.